In this lecture, we are going to study about the if and else statements in C++ programming. So we will see what is this if else statement, what is it used for, and we will see examples of how to use them in programs. Okay, so coming to the if statement, the if statement is used to execute a block of code only if a certain condition is met. So this is the speciality of an if statement. It is used in order to execute a piece of code only if a certain condition that we specify is satisfied. So from the name itself, you can try to understand if. So I'm saying that if something is met, then execute this. So that is what we actually mean by the if statement. So let's see the flow of control here. So here in the if statement, we are going to have a test condition. So if the test condition is true, then there will be some block of code inside the if block. That means there will be some block of code that is written inside the if block and that will be executed if the test condition is true. Now, if the test condition is not true, that means if it is false, then the code inside the else block will be executed. Now here we see something new, that is the else block. Now what is this else? So if the test condition is not true, that means if it is false, then we can write an else and we can say that if the condition is not met, then execute what is written inside the else block. Now this else block is optional actually. If you want, you can write it or even if you don't write it, it will still work. So we will see examples of that. So from the name itself, just try to understand if and else. So I'm saying that if a condition is true, execute this else, execute something else. So that is what it actually means. So let's see the syntax of how to write the if and the else statements. So coming to the syntax, it is written like this. We will write if and within parenthesis, we have to write the condition that we have to check. So the test condition will be written here. And if the condition is true, then within this curly braces, we have to write the block of code that will be executed if the condition is true. So the control comes to this if statement, checks the condition and if the condition is true, whatever is written inside this block will be executed. So that is a syntax of the if statement. Now coming to the if else part, here we are going to write this if statement just like the same way that we have written here. So we have if and the condition will be checked here and if the condition is true or if it is satisfied, then this block of code will be executed. Now, if the condition is not true, that means if it is false, then we come to the else part and then this block of code will be executed if the condition is false. So basically it is very simple, check the condition, if it is true, execute this part. If it is not true, come to the else part and execute this part. So that is the simple logic behind the if and else statement. So let us take an example to first see the working of the simple if and then we will go to the if else part. Okay, so in this example, we have a program that is going to make use of the if statement. So here we have our header and then we have the main function and inside the main function, we are declaring a variable of the type integer whose initial value is set to zero. Then we have a std cout statement. So we are printing on the screen, enter any number and then a new line. So we are basically trying to ask the user to enter a number. Then using C in, we accept that number into the variable called num, which we have declared here. So whatever number the user has entered will be stored inside num. Now here is our if statement. So here I am writing if and within this parenthesis, we are writing num is greater than 10. So the condition to be checked is if the variable num is greater than 10 or not. So if it is greater than 10, that means if this condition is true, then we come to this if block and we are printing out something saying that the number is greater than 10. So that is a simple thing that we want to do. Then we come out of the if block and we return zero. So whatever is written inside this curly braces is the statement within the if. So again, let me tell you if you are having just one statement after the if, that means if you are having just one statement in your if block, it is okay even if you don't use the curly braces. But if you are having more than one statement, you should use curly braces. So here, even though we are having just one statement, we will use the curly braces so that we are clear about the syntax. Okay. So now let us run this program and see how it works. So here we come to Visual Studio Code and we have the same program written here, which we just saw. And the name of my file is if.cpp. So let us compile this program and see how it works. So I type G++ if.cpp and I press enter and let's see. Yes, it is compiled successfully. There are no errors and the default output file name is a.exe. So let us run the output file. So I type dot slash a.exe and I press enter and here the program is run successfully and it is saying enter any number. 
So this part is executed successfully and it is waiting for the input from the user. So let me enter any number. So let us say I enter 50 and then I press enter and then it says the number is greater than 10. So it checked if the number I entered which is 50 which is stored in num is greater than 10 or not and it found that yes it is greater than 10. So it printed the number is greater than 10. So that is what happens. Okay, now let's run this program again and see what will happen if we enter a number that is less than 10. So I run the program again and it asks me to enter any number. So let me enter 9 and if I press enter, we see that nothing happens. The program just terminates because we did not write anything to specify what will happen if the number entered is less than 10. So we only wrote one condition that is if the number is greater than 10. If the number is greater than 10, this will be executed. If it is less than 10, then nothing happens. It just comes out of the if and it just returns 0 and the program terminates. So that is why we see nothing happens here. Alright, so we will now try to make this program even better using the else statement as well. So let's see how we can do that. So coming back to our program, we saw that this is the condition that was checked and we saw that whenever the number is greater than 10, it prints this statement that is the number is greater than 10. Okay, so we want to add some more things to this program. We want to display that the number is less than 10 if the number that the user entered is actually less than 10. So let's see how we can do that as well. Okay, so we have come to this program here where we are just adding some more things to the previous program. So here the things that are there in the beginning are the same like the previous program. But here there is a small difference in the if else statement. So here we have a condition which says if the number is greater than 10. So if it is greater than 10, we execute the block inside this if which says the number is greater than 10. Now there is an else part over here. Now when will else be executed? Else will be executed if this condition is false. That means whenever the user enters a number that is less than 10, then it will not execute this part but it will come to this else part and it will print the number is less than 10. So the condition becomes false, we come to else. If the condition is true, it remains inside this if. So that is the change that we are going to make and we will see how it is working. So let's go to Visual Studio Code and try to run this program. Okay, so I have the same program that is written in our Visual Studio code. So here we see that we have the if and the else. Now let us see if this will work correctly and in the way that we want. So here the name of my file is if else.cpp. So let me compile this program. So I type g++ if else.cpp and I press enter and let's see if it is compiling correctly. Yes, it compiled correctly. There are no errors and the default output name will be a.exe. So let us run that. So I type dot slash a dot exe and I press enter and it is asking me to enter any number. So let me enter any number now. Let's say that I am entering 11 and I press enter. It says the number is greater than 10. So this part is executed correctly. So the number was actually greater than 10 and this part got executed correctly. Now let me run the program again once more and this time let me enter a number that is less than 10. So let me enter 9 here and if I press enter, now it says the number is less than 10. So this condition became false and because of that it came to the else part and it printed the number is less than 10. So we see that the else part is also working correctly now. Okay, now let me take one more example. Let me run this program again and this time let me enter the value 10. So what will happen? So take a moment to think what is going to happen and what will be the output if I press enter now. So we see that if the number is greater than 10, this should print. If it is less than 10, it is printing this. Now what will be the output for this? I am exactly entering the value 10. So let me press enter now. So it is printing the number is less than 10. So we know that 10 is less than 10. That is not correct. 10 is equal to 10. So let us see why this happened. So the control came here and it checked if the number is greater than 10 or not. So the number we entered was 10. So is 10 greater than 10? No, that is not true. It is false. So it is not going to execute this part. So it is going to come to the else part and directly print whatever is written in the else statement. So that is what happened and that is why it printed the number is less than 10. So that is why we got this output. Now what if I want to print that if I enter exactly 10, it should also print that the number is equal to 10. So for that, I need to add some more things to this program and that we will see in the next lecture. 
All right, so coming back to our program, we saw that this program is working correctly, but we saw that there was a small thing that we want to add, and that is not possible by just using the thing that we have used till now. There is a little more that we have to add, and we will see how to accomplish that using the else if statement, which is an extension of this if else statement in the next lecture. So I hope this lecture about the if and the else statement is clear to you. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next one.